Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters news video. I do these videos every now and then whenever there's a fascinating bit of news there in the world of cryptids, or monsters in this case, and whenever it presents itself, and especially there's articles to showcase, then I love referencing this stuff here. It's gained a lot of views when it comes to some of my past news videos, so I'm always happy to share this information. And in this case, it has to do with the biggest all-star in the world of cryptids, Bigfoot himself. You know how I don't really like to talk about Bigfoot too much, only because it's a lot of stuff that's commonly known, but in this case, it was a fascinating bit of news involving the world of the FBI. Apparently, the FBI took a sample of some Bigfoot skin, some hairs that were that were submitted back in the 1970s. And so they took an official examination and they came back with their results. All this stuff was apparently obtained from the Freedom of Information Act. And the way the article was stating it, um, it showcases not just some of the pictures, but also the actual investigation itself. It's a lot of correspondence, a lot of back and forth type of letters that were sent between the organization that sent the samples and, in this case, the FBI. So very fascinating stuff. I'll include links for it all below and I'll include a summary of it here. But let's go ahead and let's talk about this news associated with the results of their official FBI investigation into Bigfoot. So here's how it started. Uh, this was back Back in 1975, to be specific, there was a report in an article, something called the Washington Environmental Atlas, that stated that the FBI at that point was conducting some kind of, I don't know if there were investigations or analysis into the quote-unquote Bigfoot phenomenon. That's at least what the article was stating. And so because of it, it caught wind with an organization called the Bigfoot Information Center. I don't know if that thing is still there today. It probably is. Someone might have posted it in the comments below. But there was a gentleman there by the name of Peter C. Bryan who looked at their article and started referencing it when he submitted stuff to the FBI. So but then in 1976, he uh, had a sample of hairs, which you're looking at a picture of here. This is like like a picture from the direct FBI vault. I'll include, and that's on the links below. So this is 22 pages of stuff that the FBI has released related to this investigation. And one of those is the picture of this. And so these hairs were obtained there by the Bigfoot Information Center, and they were forwarded off to the FBI. I think though officially though it was started with uh, correspondence. In fact, there was, when you see those 22 pages, you'll see there's a lot of back and forth. Um, there's a lot of requests and then more requests and then submission of requests and then finally confirmation of these requests. It's just, uh, it seems like it's a lot of mundane stuff and it is a lot of, of, of stuff that just seems to repeat itself. But eventually the article or the way that the pages illustrated Eventually, the FBI, there was a someone there, an administrator, that stated, yes, go ahead, please, and submit this information to us. And then I think the gentleman's name was Jay Cochran, assistant director of the FBI laboratory division, and he stated to go ahead and send it to a specific address, and they'll take a look. I'm just surmising it here. That's not how he stated it, but essentially that's what it was. And the reason why they officially took these samples is uh, the way the articles was mentioning it, even though the FBI primarily does, in this case the laboratory, primarily does investigations on a criminal level, like trying to find forensics, whether it's hair samples, skin samples, any of the type of samples uh, involving any type of crime, apparently they do actually do investigations on other things. Uh, for example, they help out universities when it comes to some of the samples they need for whatever they obtain at their locations. They've also helped out archaeological sites as well when they've come across certain interesting finds and then they have the FBI try to look, or at least the laboratories there, try to look into to determine what these things are. So reading the official letters that are in all these 22 pages, uh, 
the back and forth, eventually it was stated that, yes, they'll take a look on a quote-unquote exception basis, and then when they did so, then they'll be able to give the results. And the BIC, the Bigfoot Information Center, agreed. Uh, they sent it off stating that they will they agreed that the FBI is not taking any kind of formal stance into the existence of Bigfoot. They're just simply using this information and these samples to try to determine what it is, and whatever it is, they're not going to hold it to the FBI. FBI. So finally, the results came back, and then guess what? It turns out that it was actually deer hairs. So that's essentially what the FBI stated. They did their sample, they tested it, they returned the hairs back, and then in one almost final set of correspondence letters, they stated that everything came back to be deer hairs, average hairs found on common deers. And that was it. Then the final letter from the gentleman from the Bigfoot Information Center, whoever received it there, stated that they thank you so much, Mr. FBI, and they got the information, and then that was it. Uh, so if you wanted to go into a little bit of a wormhole, highly recommend doing so. Take a look at all these letters, all these correspondences, all the pictures that are within them too. Um, the Bigfoot Information Center sent a lot of articles, it seems, uh, clippings in this case of articles from some of the stuff that, uh, that I was mentioning, I guess, uh, to also showcase the Bigfoot Information Center, their stance and, and their prominence, but also to showcase proof of why they're wanting to submit this stuff. And then you'll also find some of the other interesting ways that these things are filed. Like you'll see a lot of initials, a lot of stamps, some weird numbers just written here and there it goes to show you that when you submit anything to the government it probably it passes so many hands until it finally just gets to the final desk and then when that happens whoever signs off on it sends it off and then that's it now interestingly enough there was one tidbit that stood out and that was this. Remember I was mentioning earlier about that Atlas article stating that the FBI had done some Bigfoot investigations into the Bigfoot phenomenon. Well, when they were writing back to the Bigfoot Information Center, they stated that they don't have any recollection of those previous investigations. So that was fascinating to me to, to read on there. They pretty much publicly denied having the, having done or having heard of those investigations and why it was referenced in that Atlas article. Uh, they, they didn't state uh, you know any reasons behind it, but that's their, that's their official stance. That didn't stop them though from doing this investigation, but at least they took that stance when it came to those other so-called claim investigations. Now, as always, there's, there's going to be people that state, well, those deer hairs could have been just swapped with something else like they were really bigfoot samples but then uh they were they were uh you know found out to be okay this is too much of a good news too much of a big news so we'll just state it's deer hairs when it comes to false uh analysis something along those lines so there's always going to be someone that states it's a conspiracy but at least with regards to the fbi that was their official stance in this investigation and pretty fascinating stuff don't you think when it comes to this kind of stuff it's it think of it this way imagine if anyone a major department from the government uh, took an official investigation into a very large matter like let's say uh, something like involving the Loch Ness Monster or another thing like the Chupacabra or something else uh, like another big all-star in the world of cryptids and they analyze things and then they came back with an official result even if the official result isn't as exciting as it sh you know as, as it should be as we hope for at least in this case they took an actual stance within it and so uh, that in this case it happened to be with Bigfoot. So what do you guys think? Um, take a look at the article from Yahoo when you have a chance. Take a look at the official link from the FBI. You'll see all those fascinating pages on there too, thanks to the Freedom of Information Act. If anyone has any more info, anything else I might have missed, please post those comments below. The last thing I wanted to mention too, it was fascinating reading all this because back then in the 70s, it all involved lots of back and forth by mail. And you'll see the dates, how it jumps between several weeks to several months. And so I'm thinking to myself, my goodness, imagine if you're in that Bigfoot Information Center, you're all excited with regards to sending something. You finally get a letter from the FBI, and then it states that they needed to send it to another department or something else involving there's another person that'll help take care of this. Please forward it to that department. 
uh, then you have to send it again, wait for more weeks just to get that correspondence back. And then when you do, only to find out uh, then that it's been analyzed and it turns out to be something else, it's a far different world than it was today. Like in this case, I imagine this stuff would have just been sent immediately online and then probably by FedEx within by next day or UPS. And then when that happens, then something much quicker would happen in a couple of days as opposed to something like this taking months uh, when it came to the start to the very finish. But in any case, that was another thing that stood out. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.